video, we are talking about laser levels. Laser levels have become a staple on the job, starting from foundation layout all the way through to hanging pictures in your finished project. Laser levels are an efficient and accurate tool for almost every trade. In today's video, we are going to look at how they work, what makes a good laser, and what does level even mean? Laser is an acronym standing for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. Whoa, now that's a mouthful, but don't worry. It'll all make sense in a second and you'll feel a lot more 007. Albert Einstein in 1917 introduced the concept of stimulated emission, the SE part of laser. But it wasn't until 1960 when we had the first working laser and later came the semiconductor laser invented by Dr. Robert Hall in 1962, which is now the most commonly used laser and what's used in your laser lab. Now remember, when it comes to lasers, we are dealing with the quantum realm. You never know what's in this box, and sometimes you might even find a cat. Let's look at how a typical laser works. You have a flash tube surrounding a synthetic ruby, and photons are pumped into the ruby, causing them to collide with electrons. The electrons absorb the photon energy, called stimulated absorption. This brings the electron to a higher energy state. In this state, the electron can be hit again with another photon, causing it to spontaneously emit a photon of energy in the same frequency, phase, and polarization of the incoming photon, which also still exists. This is called stimulated emission, the SE part of laser. Next is light amplification, the LA part of laser. Reflective material is used to amplify the photons, causing more stimulated emission and directing the coherent light which means the light waves are in phase and traveling in the same direction out of the laser in a narrow beam. Now let's look at the semiconductor laser. In a semiconductor laser diode, you have three parts. A P-type conductor, which has a lack of electrons replaced by holes and is positively charged. The N-type conductor, which has an excess of electrons and is negatively charged. And the PNN junction in the middle. When current flows through the diode, the electrons and holes start to combine in the junction, causing the electrons to release their energy in the form of photons through stimulated emission. This creates a chain reaction producing more photons while being reflected off the mirrored surfaces and directing the coherent light to shine through in a concentrated beam. Because the light is mostly in the same frequency and coherent, you get a very thin line width, along with it being monochromatic, like red and green. You can actually make many colors of laser light depending on the material and the frequency of the photons emitted. So what's the difference between a red laser and a green laser? The red laser has a longer wavelength of 650 nanometers and the green is 532 nanometers. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter. To give you some perspective, a human hair is around 100,000 nanometers thick. That's 187 times bigger than the green laser. Because of the wavelength and how our eyes perceive light, the green laser appears brighter and more visible. The mechanics behind making them is also different. Red lasers use a diode, optics, and some electronics. These are fairly easy to make and assemble, so red lasers are cheaper. The green laser requires a special diode, a second infrared crystal, and a frequency doubling crystal. These have to be very carefully aligned in order for the laser to function properly. Because it takes more work to make, green laser's cost is higher. Now, if you're still not impressed, all that happens in this little diode. But wait, there's more. Now we know how the laser beam is produced, how do we get horizontal and vertical lines? Well, there are a series of mirrors and reflectors that shine the beam in the different directions. You can see them here on the different models. Here is one of the mirrors inside the laser tube. The quality and adhesion of these mirrors are very, very important to the accuracy and quality of a laser level. So what makes a good laser level? It starts with the laser diode. Most higher end lasers are using similar diodes. This technology has gotten pretty good and reliable. Where the difference comes into play is in the engineering of the laser. The optics, the mirrors and adhesive, the ability to adjust the diode, the line width, laser accuracy, 
and bells and whistles like plumb lock, brackets, fine adjustments, and durability. You probably won't be able to check out the internal components, but the laser specs and warranty offered by the company should give you a good sense of what quality they offer. Now you understand the laser part, but what about the less obvious but equally important matter of what is level? Being that we live on an oblate spheroid called Earth, which is a little wider at the equator than the poles, how do we determine level? Let's imagine a line from the center of the Earth to the surface and draw a line 90 degrees to that line. That would be level. You can see the orientation of the line changes as you move along the surface, whether vertical, horizontal, or diagonal. To give a little perspective, the Earth's circumference around the equator is 24,901 miles. That means every 69.17 miles, there's a one degree change in level. So when you fly a plane other than takeoff, you're always flying down to maintain altitude. Interesting. Here's another example. Let's say you hung a picture level in California and one in North Carolina. Put the two pictures together, the North Carolina picture would be 32.26 degrees different than California. It seems level, is a bit relative. Thank you for watching. I hope this video gives you a little insight into how laser levels work. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. I've got a lot more videos coming out about building and how stuff works. Make sure you stay tuned for the upcoming video on testing your laser level. See you next time.